Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava, and this is Speedplay Greece in Victoria 2, number 4. We left off in a really good position, more or less. You'll notice our empire has spread out through quite a few areas. I picked the Revolt Risk map mode because I expected it all to be one color. It's really not, but that's not too much of an issue. Uh, diplomatically, there we go. We can see we control quite a bit of the world. We have a Cassus Belly on the Persians, and we're going to charge in and invade them basically right now. Uh, first of all, though, we're going to increase our national stockpile to support our troops. And, yeah, basically just move our force forward and declare war against the Persians. Uh, we can pass reforms, but we're not going to because we want to start getting some of these social reforms. So we'll just kind of ignore our people for now. Hopefully they'll get upset enough that we'll be able to pass reforms that they don't really want, but that they kind of need. All right, so we're not doing all that great budgetary or uh, budget-wise, but we still have a ton of money. We're going to be spending most of that on our naval bases, which we really should be researching a technology for instead of state and government, especially if we're going to be as effective colonially as I hope. Uh, but we'll still have a little bit of time, not as much as we would really like. Uh, one thing I noticed is we can go ahead and just take Darfur right now, so we'll go ahead and start doing that. And then you see we do not have very much colonial power, and that's definitely going to be an issue over time. Uh, well, at any rate, we're going to make the problem slightly worse by declaring war on Persia and taking one of their provinces, Khuzestan in particular. Alright, Khuzestan. Alright, and the reason for this is we will finally connect Greek Asia to the Ottoman Empire. And it looks like right as we did that, they made peace with the Russians. And that's alright. They can't influence them while they have a truce. The British can, but they're our allies, so hopefully they, you know, well, hopefully they won't for one, but hopefully also if they do, they won't get upset at us and declare. I'm pretty sure they'd have to break the alliance first, so hopefully it's not a reasonable fear at the moment. And yeah, other than that, we're just going to keep making money and move forward, hope for the best, and take this land, hopefully, for basically free from Persia. I am a little tempted to take over Fars Kerman, uh, just because that'll make the area that we control look significantly better than if we just leave it alone. And honestly, I don't really have a much better of a reason than that. It produces some opium, which is cool. Uh, we're going to keep our Temperance League. So what do they have? They have opium, they have some metals. Really nothing amazing. Although nothing terrible either. So realistically we could just take that province. It is five extra infamy though. Looks like there is an international crisis. Luckily we avoided having to get involved in that because we are at war. It's for Austria and Moldovia. Let's see where that is. Alright, so it's for that one tiny province. Two, two provinces, that tiny state, I mean. Alright, and the Russians are backing the Romanians, so that is very interesting. It makes sense that they would, but wow, that, that could be an interesting thing to just bring the world to war. So we'll have to keep up on that. Austria and Belgium, that's really nobody. Prussia, if that joins the Russian side. France, even. The UK would support Austria. Alright, so basically Romania is getting their land. That's basically just the way to read into that. We'll prolong the war with Persia just so we don't get involved. We just have to make it last a year. The Swedes want to ally us, but I don't really see any reason to do that. They might have something of a naval power, and maybe they could conceivably distract some Russian troops if we fight them, but that's not really anything. So France has joined Russia, which basically just further buries Austria. The UK joined Austria, though, so we're getting ourselves a world war about, you know, three decades before that's actually a thing. Yeah, so as long as the uh, Prussians stick to the side that they were supposed to be joining just a moment ago and join the Russians, then we'll probably just see Austria get completely dominated by all of their neighbors. It might even see uh, we, it might even see Serbia get some of their cores if it really just goes to hell. Although that's fairly unlikely. It looks like our people's militancy went down somehow, which is kind of interesting. I am really tempted to just go ahead and try to take Fars Kerman. 
it would look pretty nice. And then, I mean, realistically, well, hmm, how many regions do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven with that. We'll leave them for now. We'll, we have a lot of land we need to take from the Ottomans, so we will just not risk the, and it would not even be risked infamy, it would be guaranteed infamy if we went and took that. So yeah, we will save that for later. At a future point, it'll be it'll be a nice addition to the empire. All right. So meanwhile, what else do we have to do? We have quite a few of our transports already ready to go. We will split them so that we just have seven, and then I believe that we're still building three more. Looks well. I don't know. We should be at least. So we'll send these seven and start trying to pick up all of the various small armies we've just kind of got around the world. So that we can build them into an actual force. Also, I'm not entirely sure when it happened, but apparently the British did give us those Ionian Islands. So we have all of our cores. Uh, we can also go ahead and create that protectorate in Darfur, so we'll go ahead and do that, get some slaves, because apparently... Okay, no, they're gone. I was going to say, I didn't think we were a slave state. Or a state with slaves, however you want to phrase that. At any rate, so we only have one naval base still being built, so we kind of messed up by getting state and government before the next naval base tech. What I'm going to do is just get two naval base techs, that way we have two layers of it, and then we'll focus more on uh, actually getting technology so we can declare war on the Ottomans. Which, while it is something we want to do, they are allied with the French now, and that's kind of tedious and friendly with the Russians. So the Ottomans aren't really a practical target right now. We will send our boats over to just keep an eye on their capital and see what's going on there. In the ideal world, ooh, okay, so unfortunately they have an army there, a significant one. And what is this? Acquire... Oh, what? Wow. Apparently the Austrians won the crisis and took a province from Russia. I have no idea how that became the terms. But a weaker Russia is a better Russia as far as we're concerned, so that's pretty cool. They're now the 8th ranked great power, we're number 7, so we are better than the Russians in some measure. Only prestige, actually. We just got Mission to Civilize, which is very nice news. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look. We can't do anything else for the next four years, but then we should be able to just dig our way through Africa if we have enough colonial power, which we might. We also did get more by upgrading our naval bases. So there's really... Yeah, so hopefully it'll work out well. We also forgot to do anything in this war, so we'll go ahead and just keep moving forward. Uh, in a way, uh, it's very lucky that we didn't have the opportunity to try to join the crisis, because I would have just immediately sided with the Romanians, thinking that, well, obviously they're going to win, but that was not the case at all. Alright, so that's definitely going to lead to tensions, though, and probably see Prussia allied to the Russians just smashing Austria for the foreseeable future. Which could be interesting. I wonder if they're allied to one another. No, the Russians are allied to the French, and the Austrians to the British, which explains how the alliances went the way they went. Alright, and we'll just move our forces further into Persia, keep taking all their things. At this point, we do want to get out of the war as soon as possible. Ew. Oh, what? Kokand is the war leader? That's pretty weird. I guess Persia really got wrecked. Is really the only thing that we can make out of that. Meanwhile, our navy is nowhere near where they need to be, but that's okay. They'll get there in time. And we'll just move to Tehran, take over the Persian capital, and then sue for peace. Which they should be willing to accept at that point. And we'll just go at speed 5, because there's really nothing all that much going on other than the slow grind towards the Persian capital against literally no forces at all. So if we're very lucky, they will descend into some sort of rebellion afterwards and just reset the influence of all the great powers. That would be lovely. How likely is it? I can really say. But it would be lovely. And in fact, it's probably decently likely. If we look at them, let's see, from a civilizational standpoint, that 90%, ooh. Okay, if they're at 90%, then we might just want to take Fars Kerman right now. 
simply because if we wait too much longer, they'll probably just civilize and we won't be able to take it except for, for 11 infamy. So it'd be 5 infamy now or 11 later on. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we'll do it. Maybe it was short-sighted, maybe it'll slow us down too much. But uh, once they civilize, it's really not going to be worth it to fight them, at least for quite a while. And it's not that bad of a province. It's not ideal, but it, it, it should work. And then we'll just have to slow things down and focus on colonization, and then we'll take back our course from the Ottomans, and that should keep us decently busy for a while. Although now we do have to get considerably more war score. We could probably just ask somebody for access. Will not accept. Hmm, guess we can't. And I don't really think, yeah, Afghanistan doesn't like us whatsoever, so they're not going to do that. Alright, well, we'll just have to siege Persia out, or occupy them all the way. And, and then by doing that, we'll basically probably guarantee that they will have a reactionary rebellion, not civilize, and kind of make it redundant what we're doing right now. Oh, well, they accepted it. And there we go. Greek Asia now touches the Ottomans, and the Greece Empire touches the, the Greek Empire touches the Ottomans, so we are in a good spot in that sense. What we may also want to do is declare war on Egypt in the next little while. Uh, we'll probably wait the nine months for our infamy to go down so that even if it happens in a worst case sort of situation, uh, we won't be affected. Uh, they are friendly with the US though, so that's probably not too likely. Now we can't can't influence them because we're at peace or because we have a truce. So we'll just chill. The Ottomans are getting some rebellions, it looks like they just defeated them. But that's no matter. Max naval base plus one, that is going to be significant. We'll go ahead and expand all of our European naval bases, at least the ones we can afford to. If we run out of money on this runaround, though, then we're in really bad shape. And it looks like we're pretty close to running out of money, but not quite there. So there we go. Uh, what we will do is we'll drop our funding to our soldiers, we'll go ahead and not research the next level because apparently that's the max level we can get. At least for another seven years. Or eight years. Eh, almost seven. Seven and some change. Anyway though, we'll save the money, we kind of need it. Uh, if we look at our factories, we'll go ahead and upgrade that one glass factory because it's really the only factory in the country that's anywhere close to being uh, full, I suppose. So we do have a kind of thriving industry. We certainly have a lot of factories. None of them are really making anything at the moment because no one's working for them. But that'll hopefully change in time. Meanwhile, the Russians are really holding on to their influence over Serbia, although we did win over the Montenegrins. And besides that, we're just getting the naval bases built. 1,080 days, I'm going to go ahead and just make up is four years? Three years? Three years. Three years and a little bit. I'm not really sure. 365 times three is slightly more than that, I want to say. Although I'm not actually doing the math. All right, so the United Kingdom declared war on, e on uh, China, which looks like China's just taking the opportunity to smash British, uh, British China. Not really surprising, and also part of the reason we didn't go back for more just because that's pretty brutal and they're not going to win that whatsoever. I'm not sure how good your army would have to be to beat that massive swarm of Chinese forces, uh, but let's take a look at a couple things. Civilizationally, they're at 30%, so we don't really have to worry about them for that long, or we don't have to worry about them for a long time. However, they do have 236 brigades, which is something like 700,000 troops. So we'll leave them alone. At least for now. We can get roughly 100,000 troops, so if we can win with 7 to 1 losses favoring ourselves, uh, then we could fight them. Now, it is possible, and I've done it before in different games, but I don't know if we actually are a powerful enough state to do that right now. Maybe, though. That would be interesting. And it's definitely probably, uh, and it is definitely the best use of the 5 remaining infamy that we have because another Chinese state would really just set us up in a good way. And you know, now that I'm really speaking about it, I am kind of interested in taking on the challenge of it. 
Also, we can build three Persian forces, so that's kind of cool. Is that entirely worth the infamy we took? Probably not. But it is, you know, something. Now I'm going to go ahead and build another small army. Alright, and now the Chinese, if we're lucky, are just going to be hurtling all their forces into British India. If they lose enough of their troops, then we can probably get away with declaring war on them and just charging our own forces into that mall. And if we do lose all of our forces, then we could probably just rebuild them. Uh, at least to some extent. We already have significantly more forces than we did previously. Military access from the French will go ahead and accept that. They're fighting Macron, which is an uncivilized nation somewhere. Austria declared war on the Prussians. That's interesting. Parma wants to ally us. I'm not sure where that is, but it sounds... Okay, it's northern Italy. No thanks, guys. Alright, so this is pretty much just going to be the colonial episode since, well, we're about to unlock the scramble for Africa, and oh my god, we need to get the text for that, because if we don't, we are screwed. Alright, we need machine guns, I believe, in order to get colonial negotiations, which minuses, or which lowers the minimum life's rating by, by 10%. Yeah, getting all of my words messed up. Okay, life rating of most of Africa, 10%. Our current colonizable rating is 20, so really all we do need to do is get machine guns, which is something we can do easily. And I guess we can just watch the uh, Prussian-Austrian war and try to figure out who's on which side. So it is the Prussians against only the Austrians, and apparently also Tuscany. We'll go find the Nile. And the Austrians, Austrians against Prussia, Bavaria the Netherlands, and Spain, for whatever reason. So yeah, I'm guessing Prussia's going to win and win out loud. Meanwhile, the Ottomans have no troops on their capital, which could be awesome news. Uh, realistically, let's see. We need nationalism and imperialism in order to get the Magelli idea. Well, let's take a look at what exactly it is. The Magali idea. So yeah, once we get National Fraternity, which is just a discovery. Alright, and we'll have a 2% chance of it, so basically sometime in the next five years we have an almost certain chance of getting it. I'll say maybe that's not exactly statistically accurate. Russia just declared war on Austria because they really want that piece of their land back. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at Sphere of Influence. The Prussians managed to get all of that. Somehow it did not include Schleswig. So that's interesting. Schleswig. And, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so France is not allied to Russia anymore, which means the Prussians may very well declare war on the French in order to uh, form Germany. If they get nationalism and imperialism, which I figure they probably will because it's a pretty good tech to get, uh, then they'll probably be trying to form Germany very soon. And, uh, yeah, as soon as the British drop us as allies, probably once we manage to take a decent number of our cores back, or really all of the cores for the Megali idea, then we'll see what we're able to do. And what is this? We can influence Serbia. And we'll just remove them from the Russian sphere, now that they've been just absolutely smashed in that Russia-led war. And let's see. We're going to want our people to be socialist, at least for now. Eventually, not so much, but we're going to try to get to five revolt risk. Ottomans broke their alliance with France. Awesome. No reason at all for them to want to do that, especially right now. They are friendly with the Russians. Are the Russians still at war with the Austrians? They are. Are they doing well in it at all? 92 brigades to the Austrian 67. They'll probably win, or at least put up a decent fight. Oh, the French are attacking Macron. It's right there. I didn't realize. That's annoying. Uh, let's see. We'll split this army into two groups. Looks like we have quite a few dragoons. And we'll go drop these soldiers off, and then we'll just bring them up to bear against the Ottomans again, and kind of just hope that the Russians don't intervene while they're also fighting the Austrians. Alright, so, 
I got all the idea. We lose five infamy for that? That's ridiculous. All right, we'll do that. Why not? We'll also do the Valley of the Kings, and Egypt likes us enough, so that's awesome. More prestige for us. All right, so what did the Magali idea do for us? It gave us all of these cores. Uh, now, an interesting thing is the Ottomans have an event that'll push their capital to Ankara once we take over Romelia. So what we'll go ahead and do is justify acquiring a state, and we'll justify for Romelia. I don't believe we ever gave our people the right to vote. We still have a jingoist party in command, so that's amazing. And we'll just try to justify on that. We'll take Romelia, and then we'll take some of our cores. 10.5 infamy. Well, okay, so we got unlucky. It was bound to happen at some point. Not awesome that it happened just then. Also not terrible, though. And it looks like we have just over a year, which is pretty awful. We won't have anywhere near the colonial power that we would really have liked to get. We'll go ahead and build a bunch of man of wars, a whole ton of frigates. We'll probably put ourselves into decent amounts of debt with these actions right now. Or maybe not debt, but we'll definitely get a deficit once the uh, boats all are finished, which could take some time. We're also not researching anything because we're going to save up in order to just absolutely rush the uh, machine guns. We're going to absolutely rush machine guns, and that'll get us to a point where we can just charge into Africa, hopefully ahead of anyone else. We're going to have a very busy and somewhat schizophrenic moment, and uh, really series of moments, while we are both fighting the Ottomans and colonizing Africa to the best of our ability. Also, where are all of our transports? They are in two separate groups. That's not really a bad thing or a great thing, kind of just an inconvenience. Looks like the British now just totally encapsulate our little section, so that's kind of interesting, kind of annoying, but what are you going to do? Huh. So yeah, that's cool. Now we don't really have to worry about Chinese, the Chinese ever attacking us, or at least not over land. So as long as we're navally dominant, we don't have to worry about anything. Uh, Great Britain is definitely going to be the end game boss. Uh, realistically, we're probably not going to go after them, uh, just because it might be very hard for us to get to a point where we can conceivably fight the British Empire and actually stand a decent shot of winning that fight. Uh, that being said, I'm not saying we're never going to do it, just that it's unlikely. If we do end up doing it, though, then I'll be very, very happy and more than a little surprised. Alright, so the Ottomans have 14 brigades. If we manage to get at them while the Russians and Austrians are fighting, or actually Russia's ranked 10, so as soon as they drop from being a great power, then we can just charge in and no one can stop us. It was really dumb of them to break their alliance with the French, who were really their only ally and best of friends. All because France was going after Macron, which I really shouldn't have given them access to do. And look at that, Prussia declared on France, so it's not like they're going to ally the Ottomans now, and even if they do, why would they? Or why would they help? They'd probably just break the alliance and give up. So yeah, we're once again back in an awesome spot, completely due to no action of our own, which is kind of weird, but really this game is just about seeing the opportunities as they show up and taking them, to a good extent. Sometimes you get really unlucky, we're just, I mean, I don't want to say blessed, because that's kind of an odd word, but we're very blessed in a way with how the events have taken us and our our goals to just kind of dominate the uh, old Byzantine areas and hopefully Alexandrian areas as well. And if we're very lucky, the Ottomans won't actually collapse and they'll just have a series of rebellions which will destabilize them and keep them very weak. And that would work out pretty much just as well for our interests. Oh, and it sounds like some of our boats are getting completed. It looks like this Spanish are fighting the Egyptians. Okay, okay, what are they trying to take, I wonder? The Sudan concession. Demand Sudan. Pretty straightforward. Okay, that's not cool at all. That means the Spanish may very, very really have the potential of just blocking us off when we try to go into Equatoria, which would really just severely limit our expansion into Africa. So hopefully that doesn't happen. We can, however, add Serbia to our sphere of influence, which is cool, especially right before we declare war on the Ottomans. Although that just got slowed down a little bit, not that it matters too much, our army is not really in place whatsoever. 
I wonder how far along that is coming. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get our people some health care. Get our population growth up as quickly as we can. And what else were we looking at? We are looking into diplomacy, trying to find out that we have six days left before we can declare war. All right. We'll shoot our maintenance all the way up to 100%. And they still have a bigger navy than we do, so we'll park our boats. Acquire state. Cassis Belly is a go. We'll go ahead and drop this group of soldiers off, rush back over, pick up the last group, and then we're ready. We're, we're going to be in it to win it at that point. And we'll just group those two those uh, two groups of troops together. And we'll bring this one group up. We should probably mobilize and ally the Serbs. Will not accept. Okay. Whatever, Serbia. We are your protector, and we could have got you a bunch of your cores back, but whatever. Go ahead and just don't accept that. Okay, so the Russians are still friendly with them, but they're probably not going to be a great power for very much longer. That's really the question. Do we wait it out? Do we accept the fact that the Russians are probably not going to get involved, and once they do, they'll not be a great power anymore? Oh, and we also need to go ahead and research machine guns right now and get ready for some of the busiest years of our empire. I'm going to just wing it. We're going to declare war. We're going to acquire state. Uh, let's actually pick the right one. Rumelia. Alright, declare war. Acquire state. Let's find it now. Any moment now. Rumelia, 30 war score. The British would accept, and Montenegro would also accept. We're not going to call them in. Not yet, at least. We will call in Montenegro, though, because why not? And I will just march on Istanbul. And also just roll on into Rumelia. Uh, did I not actually wait until these troops were there? No, I did. Okay. Alright, and they only have 14 regiments, so that's not really anything to worry about. We'll move this one group over into the middle, and we will actually mobilize the poor. Not that we really need to, but it'll be nice to have just subsidiary armies that can go around and just encircle whatever Ottoman forces we come across. We'll chase this Ottoman army down. March 23rd, 24th, alright, we won't catch them. But we'll go ahead and smash that army when we get the opportunity. We'll just do it now. Alright, and that's going decently well, as you would expect when you outnumber the enemy by so much. Hmm, I'm really tempted to just not, not use our troops that we just rose up or brought up. But we'll, we'll just chill for now. We'll, we'll leave our troops mobilized. Looks like the Ottoman army has shown, has decided to show up. And at this point, we may as well use at least a small portion of all of these forces that just came up. Lazy natives are going to have to learn to adapt, so long as it costs us prestige if they don't. And we'll just smash on into these Ottoman armies. Now, what we'll use all of these side forces for is to just set up a... basically just an encirclement around the Ottoman force. I don't know if we'll actually have enough in the way of regiments to pull that off. Actually, it looks like we do. It's just a matter of will the Ottoman army withstand the onslaught long enough to be surrounded, and it does not look like they will. We'll even leave behind the undermanned groups, and at this point they can cross the sea if they so choose, but it looks like they just immediately lost, so they're not able to do that. And, uh, yeah, cool. Little baby Montenegro is not really achieving anything. They don't have an army. It doesn't seem like they're mobilizing, and if they are, it isn't anything that matters. Or isn't to an extent that matters. Austrians fighting Russians in the Mediterranean, which is interesting. They're not really either of them naval powers. Okay, so the Ottomans decided that they haven't given up just yet. Oh, now Serbia wants an alliance. Well, we will accept. And we'll even call them in. Give them a chance to fight. 
All right, now I don't actually know if we'll be able to cross. It doesn't look like we will be able to, which is a bit unfortunate. We will go ahead and fund our navy. That's going to put us in a severe deficit, but it's something that we kind of need to do. Now what we could do is not really contest their navy and its position, but we could just transport troops around. Looks like America is fighting two Sicilies over what, I wonder? Cutting them down to size. Okay. Well, why not? And we'll just move our army away. If the, if the Turks decide to bring their forces into Europe, which it looks like they're kind of doing to a small extent, then we'll just destroy them here. And then we don't have to worry about our, our troops being uh, attacked when we go and land over on their side. Alright, we just got uh, machine guns, so we should be able to get Mission to Civilize in really any time at all now. Uh, the next thing we need to do is get Analytic Philosophy, just get that tech rate up. And yeah, other than that, we'll just keep going about. Look at that, we immediately got Colonial Negotiations. So where are we going to colonialize? Where are we going to colonize? Where are we going to use these negotiations? Hmm. Well, we'll go to those three areas. Oh, it looks like we can even... No, we can't. Okay, we'll go to those three areas and we'll see what happens. It looks like pretty soon we'll get those naval bases completed and we'll maybe be able to go to more territories as well. And we'll also go and turn our armies around and just start beating up these Ottoman forces. Wait a minute, there. Oh, now the Spanish are trying to get Palestine. That's entirely inconvenient. We're going to end up having to fight a lot of wars later on to get all these territories that are just really natural parts of our country. We'll at least have to fight the French once for this one province in Asia, and we'll have to fight the Spanish for Palestine, or Israel, or whatever you want to call it. It's Palestine in the game for, you know, pretty valid reasons, historically in this context at least. Uh, we will try to smash into that Ottoman army. They already occupied our province, though, so we kind of just fought them in a somewhat less than ideal stance for no great reason. But that doesn't matter too much. We'll just encircle them, and then it doesn't really matter how good their reasons were or their uh, battle plan. All right, and we won, and they're rushing away, so we'll just go meet them. We'll leave this group behind. And just keep trying to encircle them, although it really doesn't seem like we're going to need to worry about that. It looks like they're probably gone. And there they are, they're just gone. Alright, so we'll go ahead and just let those groups restore. We'll keep taking over the rest of Ottoman-held Europe. And from there we'll just turn around and just start taking back everything over here. Now, wait a minute. So, Egypt is fighting Spain. Is Spain at least fighting America? They are not. The French also are not going to... Hmm, actually... Okay, yeah, so you would think the Americans would be helping the Egyptians, but they're not right now because they're battling the Sicilians. So that's a little annoying. It's not really anything we can do anything about. Hopefully, though, the Americans will win their war against the two Sicilies, turn around, and defend the Egyptians' honor. Also, it looks like we can actually get one more colony set up. We will go right here into Chad, and then from Chad, hopefully be able to spread even further just throughout Africa. And we'll see how well that goes. Hopefully decently. Other than that, the Ottomans are, re are trying to retake Constantinople, but it's probably not going to go all that well for them. And we'll start transporting some of our troops over, and just start getting that process underway. Oh, okay, didn't think of that. We lost seven transports. That's probably all of our transports in the region. Because I was dumb about that. In fact, yeah, I think that was all of our transports in the theater. Now we have six. That's, that's functional. Or functional. A functional number. We have seven, actually. Alright, and they're trying to make peace with us, so we may as well demand... Aiden, because it's 31 war score right now, we'll go ahead and acquire core Aiden, bring it up to 51, 
we'll try to get all of our cores in this war and then see if afterwards we'll still be able to get something for the Serbs if they demand it, which they might. If if they're if they're good allies, they'll do that. Romania just declared war on Austria, so that kind of tells you how well their war is going. Cut two Sicilies down to side, down to size. Good work, America. Please now defeat the Spanish and all of their evil before they manage to take Jerusalem, which is just obviously a Greek city by by right. All right, so we are hemorrhaging money, and our navy really isn't being actively used to fight the Ottomans anyway. We could go ahead and change that, but I'm not going to right now. Although that might be some interesting and fun thing to risk before the war is over and once we get a decent number of troops over into Asia Minor. And hopefully, since they are still a presidential dictatorship, the ideal thing that'll happen is they won't lose their presidential dictatorship. Instead, nationalists will rise up and just kind of overthrow their state. Uh, the likelihood of that happening maybe isn't the best, but they won't really be... Oh, if we smash their navy, then they won't be able to get troops back into Europe to defend their European holdings. So that might actually work very well. Meanwhile, Russia is now a secondary power, so we kind of just managed to get past the point where they could have intervened and managed to do so without them intervening, which is really cool. And we'll just have to keep an eye out for five... Uh, average militancy so that we can go ahead and pass more unpopular reforms as any government is always want to do and it looks like our colonies are ready to go again and we actually could have started a new one but we'll wait a moment and just see what the uh, whole thing ends up looking like we'll go ahead and just create those switch to the colonial map mode Alright, so right now we can still make colonies in these provinces. It takes up slightly more of our... It would take 24 colonial power for that one area alone. The plus side is I won't have to be constantly thinking about uh, just checking up on our colonies. So we might end up getting more by doing that. I can't really say for sure. Portugal, luckily, is just a civilized nation, so them cutting off all of the territory they did cut off actually helps us quite a bit. So what we might want to do is just beeline, looks like the French are there, which is going to be problematic. But we'll just beeline into Africa. Let's see, actually. If we look at regions, the French are taking that one region, and then we can probably try to battle them for that one. So taking these two is probably decent enough. And Sokoto is in the American sphere of influence, so we really can't do much about them. Although, also, no one else can either. So let's take another look at it. We'll go as far as we can and just hope that those three things will work out. And those will all be done on February 25th, and this one will be done on September 29th. So I'll just have to try to keep that in mind. Which might be difficult while also narrating, but we'll see. Alright, meanwhile, we are at 56 peace score value and 65 war score value, so let's go ahead and add acquire core for this final area, and that doesn't cost anything at all. So it looks like that'll be pretty easy to get. And we'll go ahead and just drop these forces off. Just smash into those Ottoman armies like we don't respect them at all. And we do have machine guns, so really, what are they going to do? And then that allows us to focus even more on our actual colonial ventures in Africa. And yeah, this will just be another one of those episodes where we expand massively, although considerably less successfully in the way of avoiding infamy. I wonder if the Romanians are going to get anything out of this war against Austria, or if they're kind of just putting themselves too far out there. It really remains to be seen. Oh, but we can start influencing them because the Russians aren't a great power. We can even start influencing the Russians because they're not a great power. Although they'll probably bounce back. I don't really foresee them not bouncing back. Uh, the Ottomans want peace again. Our current war score, let's see, 71%. I wonder what it would cost to take one of the Serbian cores. 
In fact, we'll also just occupy them a little bit more, just because. Not really for any reason. We'll see what the uh, the Serbs do. Alright, so the Spanish are adding more and more war goals against Egypt. Hopefully, hopefully the United States will come intervene on their behalf, but they're just not doing anything right now. And let's take a look. It looks like you can barely see it, but it looks as though the French are pushing into Prussia. Their cars are way too similar, so we can't really tell. They have 17 brigades compared to the French 144. All right, Prussia is performing just amazingly poorly, given what they are, which is less than ideal for what we were hoping to achieve long term, which means we might not be able to bank on... Okay, there we go, acquire southern Serbia. They will not accept this. Well, we'll get them to the point where they will. Until then, we'll just keep moving. Uh, let's see. We'll get our entire navy. It's only 33 ships. Theirs is only 27, though. We have plus 5 attack on our admiral. Alright, let's see how this plays out. Once we defeat their navy, I wouldn't be terribly shocked if they're willing to throw in the towel. Because that is just going to be a devastating loss to them. Although it's also looking like it's not really just an overwhelming victory for us. Alright, we lost 15, they lost 21, they lost a lot of large ships, we lost a lot of small ships, and also a lot of large. So, not really the best battle, but a victory nonetheless. And we can always just recreate our navy. Uh, we should also have quite a few frigates just laying around in our various other ports, so we'll bring them all together. We'll just leave them in the Indian Ocean, though. Alright, and now the occupation of the Ottoman territories continues. Oh, and I forgot to create a protectorate in Chad. Go ahead and create that. And then we don't have enough to go ahead and build any more protectorates, so it's not like it matters. Although we lost a lot of our navy, which really would have lowered that. So that wasn't really the smartest decision on my part. Uh, we will build more frigates, though. Um, probably just in Africa. Oh, and what are these Albanian nationalists? Well, you know what? We have no problem with these guys. In fact, it would be amazing if they won. So we'll actually just clean on out of here. And let those guys do their dirty work. Or do their best. Do whatever. We'll just let them do their thing. And hopefully we'll get, in a, we'll get a free Albania just kind of kicking about. Serbia will be more buffed, and that will be cool. It will also set us up to fight Austria later on, if that's something we decide we want. And also, if it's something we don't decide we want, it's basically just going to be something we'll, we'll do. And what was that? Oh, okay, so the Austrians just gave up to the Russians. Bulgarian nationalists, all sorts of nationalists. I'm honestly thinking we may as well just let that happen. We'll stay at war with the Ottomans, kind of make sure their country falls apart a little bit, and hopefully just get to a point where all these people get their freedom. The one thing that might stop this is if the Serbians decide that they would much rather just smash all of those poor liberation movements, and honestly, they'll probably do that. So we'll just have to keep an eye out for if the Serbians start smashing all of these people, and if they do, then we'll make peace with the Ottomans. Uh, what we can still do, though, to help everybody out a little bit, is we'll just give up on that occupation, push the Ottoman navy out. It looks like they have one transport, and the rebellions are weak enough that they could probably beat a single, or beat them with a single transport worth of troops. Although the Serbians, where are the Serbians going? All right, cool. The Serbians aren't messing this up for anybody, which is really just the best thing. We'll get social science and get that sweet, sweet education efficiency. Prussia got a white piece out of France, which is amazingly lucky for them, just given the really weak position they were in. Oh, and it's April, so we missed out on this. Alright, whoops. That wasn't great. That was really not great. Um, I mean, two months isn't the most, but it's still a while. Go ahead and create these protectorates. And now here is the thing that we need to do. We're going to start battling the French right there, and we're going to try to swoop around them. 
all of this part of Africa only touches places that can't colonize and also us. Someone might try to take over Ethiopia. Totally possible. Hopefully they don't, is really just what we can say. And so we're going after the Niger Delta, we're going after that one area to battle the French, and we're going there. Ideally, we'll want to get Gabon, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. So we're just going to keep going. Keep going and hoping for the best. Uh, that's another reason we're going to want to peace out with the Ottomans fairly soon, is because once we do peace out with them, uh, then we will be able... Once we peace out with the Ottomans, we will get all of these territories and all of these ports. And we're going to need those quite a bit. So, although we are kind of betraying all of these rebel groups, and, you know, I love you rebel groups. But, uh, we're really... We're gonna have to worry about ourselves right now. They can always get their independence later. Apparently that's too expensive, so I'm sorry, Serbia. I didn't realize it costs so much. But you're not getting your core. Alright, and there we go. We're now up to 105 colonial power. We'll go ahead and upgrade these naval bases just immediately. Looks like we don't have enough money to do that all the way. We'll stop funding all of these things. Ew, now we're taking on debt anyway. Alright, whatever. It worked out decently enough. We'll go ahead and take Gabon. The French are being uppity in Africa, which we really... Yeah, that's to be expected. Alright, and the next wave of colonization is going to happen in January 3rd. This time I'll try to pay enough attention to that to make it actually happen. We'll go ahead and pay off our minimal debts. A fun fact, in Vanilla Vicky 2, the debt doesn't actually go to the investors. All the interest paid is just sucked out of the world economy. Like some weird vacuum into nothingness. So that's fun. Um, anyway though, hopefully these rebels will do well. Hopefully the Ottomans will chew and just move their capital somewhere else. Who knows how realistic that is. I would like to think fairly realistic. And we'll basically set ourselves up as the natural defenders of the interests of all of the Balkan states. And that's pretty cool. We're losing one race, which means we can actually go fund it again. We'll go ahead and fund it again. And we still have 85 colonial power, so we'll go ahead and take a look at where is the next most where the next most important place is. And it looks like nobody's even colonizing down in South of Africa, and we can just cut them off if they try. So what we're going to want to do is get over here into Outer Hossaland. Hopefully cut that off a little bit. And if we can cut off all of Sokoto, then we're great. The Ottomans are in no way anything even remotely resembling a secondary power. I'm not even sure where the Spanish stand on that. They are a secondary power, so that is slightly annoying. Hmm. They are at war with Egypt, but only with Egypt. So America, what are you doing? You really gotta step this up, buddy. Uh, Garibaldi's red shirts are taking quite a bit of influence over in Italy. It looks like they're going to... Oh yeah, they're, they're going to form Italy fairly soon. I'm just not sure if they can't do it while Sardinia Piedmont is at war. What, is, what do the Russians want from us? What is this crisis? Poland acquires all states with core provinces. No thanks, Russia. We're not going to support the status quo on this one. Alright. Wow. And it looks like, there we go, Poland just exists now. And they're in the sphere of the British, who are unbelievably powerful because they own part of China. So that's interesting. And they have a bunch of cores on all of these people, including the incredibly underperforming Prussians. So that's actually pretty cool. That'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. So, uh, take that, Russia. I guess you're not going to become a great power again. Oh, and we're still mobilized. We'll stop that. Alright, and I really hope these rebels manage to take over their territory. Bulgarian nationalists, all sorts of Bulgarian nationalists. Oh, and what is this? Their capital is in Ankara now, so in five years we'll be able to roll in and just smash them. The UK allied Poland, that's pretty much to be expected. We're losing the race in Bas Congo. And I don't expect us to win, we are just going to try to encircle the French. Hopefully we'll be able to do that. 
And hopefully the Albanian nationalists and Bulgarian nationalists content themselves with this Ottoman territory. It's really the Bulgars we have to worry about. I wonder, if I were to release this area and, say, have a puppet Bulgaria, if they would still release the rest of the provinces and just immediately become a puppet of ours. I feel like that's something that's kind of an oversight, and so probably not the most likely thing. But I also don't know for certain if they thought that far ahead when they were making this. Because I imagine that's something that would have happened in EU4, and I'm not sure if I'm actually remembering that or just kind of making it up. But it seems like we might be able to get a much larger and just dedicatedly loyal vassal Bulgaria. So we'll see. If they don't get their independence by the time I end this episode, then I'll just look that up. And if it turns out that they would be loyal to us and get all of their states as a massive loyal Bulgaria, then that would be very nice. Uh, let's see. we got to focus on here again. It's already February, so we kind of messed up the timing again. Alright, and we'll just loop around right there. Create a protector there. We still have until... April 9th, so we don't really have to worry about that just yet, and also February 9th. Oh, so that's really coming up. Hmm. What should we do? I will go ahead and just invest in Niger. We'll go ahead and push that forward. Bulgarian nationalists are doing pretty well. Create that protectorate. And then we still have about a month left, so we will go ahead and fund right there. We're getting quite a significant Greek Africa, which is very nice. Look at how many troops we're able to support right now. We are definitely going to become one of the major powers of the world very shortly. And we can influence Romania. Poland declared war on Krakow, so it sucks for you guys. The UK even joined them? Are they even in anyone's sphere right now? Or is this just going to be a stomp? Friendly with the Prussians, who I don't believe would ever try to do anything about that. And Italy just formed. Italy's going to hate us forever because of what we did to Sicily. Oh, they actually seem like they like us right now. And they're secondary power. And they're in the sphere of the French. We'll leave them alone. They're probably going to become a great power anyway, so we don't want to use our influence. Oh, it looks like the Russians are already a great power. Hmm. And the Ottomans have allied with the French. But they're also about to lose to a whole bunch of Armenian nationalists. Interesting. Anarcho-liberals, Iraqi nationalists. We're probably about to see the complete breakdown of the Ottoman Empire. Which is pretty sick. That works out amazingly well for us. That, yeah, wow, cool. They probably won't even be able to get a military. They have four brigades. That's not really anything at all. Not enough to write home about. We'll go ahead and create a protectorate right there. Let's see. Who is there? No one's there yet. We just can't reach it. We'll go ahead and try to reach Dah um, Dahomey. Dahomey? I feel like I must be mispronouncing that. At any rate, we have until October, late-ish October, before we can really worry about any other colonial ventures. So we're just not going to really worry about them right now. Send some Greek expeditions to some places. Upgrade all the ports that we didn't have money to upgrade earlier. And yeah, those nationalists are doing a pretty good job just wrecking the Ottoman Empire. It's too bad they're not doing a slightly better job. That would be really nice. But uh, yeah, for the rest of the episode, we're probably just going to be watching all this. Poland is declaring war on Austria. Oh, man, the old order is dead. Oh, are the Italians? Yeah, the Italians, the Poles, the Romanians. Oh, man, could we even go after them with the Serbs right now? I think we could. They're only allied to Baden and Schweschlig. Schwe yeah, they're allied to that one place they took off of Denmark. And uh, also to Baden. So really, we could just take the Serb cores. Bam, look at that. Iraq is independent, and they're primitive. 
Hmm, that 10 infamy could really screw us over if we take it. It really could. There's not really anything we could give away easily. We could give away Jahor. They don't really matter to us anymore at this point. It would be very risky, but I really do want it. Really do want Iraq. And they do border the Russians, so if we don't take them, the Russians might end soon. Okay, what would I give away? Two Sicilies. Could we release two Sicilies and also Bulgaria and hope very hard that if we release Bulgaria, we'll lose five infamy. That'll push us most of the way there. Uh, can we actually release two Sicilies right now? If we release the two Sicilies, that's probably a really poor choice. We're not going to do that. Yeah, we could, we could release Jahor. I'm going to leave that as something to do maybe later. Uh, Bulgaria would probably be the best bet. Uh, Kalat, maybe we'll have to think back to where those actually were. Le okay, let's see. Province Le. Let's find the province Le. Alright, so we could release that one province in just the absolute middle of nowhere, Kashmir, as well as Bulgaria. Uh, so yeah, that might actually be a very feasible thing. Just roll in, take that. I wonder if there's a Syria in this, or if that's just a New Nations mod. I feel like it's just the New Nations mod. Ooh, this is risky. We're going for it, though. There's no way we can't go for this. We do also have to build a bit of a navy in Europe. So we'll build that navy right now. But, oh my god, this would be just amazing. Such a coup d'etat if we pull it off. And I would very much so like to pull it off. Oh wait, let's see. I think I built two boats in the same place. That's not going to do. We'll try to split that up as much as we can to get it all built at once. The Ottomans aren't going to give us military access, so I'm not even going to try to ask. And we can build a lot of regiments, really just all over the place. A lot of Turkish regiments, too. Whoops. Alright, Turkish forces... We'll just build up an entirely Turkish army group. We'll even make it large. Romania got a little bit more of their lands. That's really awesome for them. We'll form an alliance with them. Alright, this is actually working out very well. And we'll just have to wait till our transports finish, and then we'll try to transport forces over to Iraq. A lot of forces we can build in Africa. We're not going to do that until we get more of Africa and just get that whole thing sorted out. We are losing a little bit of money, and our troops aren't even being funded, so that could prove to be bad later on. We are still taxing everybody at 100%. 6.9 infamy. Okay. Well, that's not ideal. Uh, let's see. And it looks like those Bulgarian nationalists have all died anyway. So we're just going to release a little old... Ladakh. So let's go ahead and just do that. Politics, release nation. Now, okay, so Ladakh, that really is just an easy choice to make. Uh, we don't really want to fight the whole world, and who's even to say Alexander's empire made it all the way into the Kashmir region? I mean, I'm not going to make that claim. I also don't really know, so I'm not going to make the counter claim. At any rate, it's the least we could give up that doesn't matter, basically, at all. And there we go. Now we're below the infamy cap. That's really cool. Uh, we're losing the race in Boss Congo considerably. We don't have the 30 colonial power to make that, so we don't just lose it outright. Hopefully it'll last until at least the end of October. And then we're good anyway. And we'll also just kind of hope that our transports finish fairly soon. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all working out. Oh, dang it, it didn't work out. We'll now have to fight for that and probably just have to beeline down against the French. So, not ideal. Oh, and the French are down here, too. Luckily, we managed to get that area. We will start heading down this way. Uh, we'll just seed this area to the French and try to take an area next to where we're already at. Hmm. Alright, so that could have been better. Could have been much worse, though. We might actually be able to win against the French if they get into some 
dumb battles against the English, which it looks like they're doing. Mission to Iraq has been slowed down. Doesn't really matter, though, since we don't have a navy ready to pick our troops up. Although we're almost there. Alright, and then we have the Protectorate Cassis Belly. We don't have our boats ready to go. And sadly, the Spanish look like they are actually going to take all of their claims against the, against the Egyptians. So that's not ideal. In a few ways. At any rate, though, we're basically at time, so when we come back, we're going to smash into Iraq and get very, very close indeed to our planned, you know, conquest of, well, I mean, something akin to the Alexandrian Empire. Uh, from there, we'll see where we can end up going. We're also nowhere near done colonizing Africa. I'm sorry, it looks just god-awful right now. Hopefully we'll have, you know, about 60 or so years to clean up all of these atrocious borders. And we're going to try to make good use of that time. It'll have to fight a lot. It'll include us having to fight a lot of European powers, so it should at least be interesting. And that means we're also going to have to focus on researching naval tech so we can get a navy that'll defend our very spread out empire. So yeah, we'll see how it all goes. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a very good day. In fact, have a great one.